I'd like to call the uh, Finance and Law Subcommittee meeting to order. It's Wednesday, November 13th, 2019. Mr. Souza. Present. Mr. Fiore. Present. Also in attendance, we have Superintendent Cabral and Assistant Superintendent Monahan. First item on the agenda this evening is student activity <coughs> requests for Parker Middle School in the amount of $910.40. Move approval. Second. Motion has been made. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? So voted. Moving on, we have use of facilities that's attached. There's quite a bit of request for facilities. It looks to be in order as far as I'm concerned, but. Fine with me. I move uh, that we receive it and place it on file. Second. Motion's been made. Second. Question. Mr. Susan, thank discussion. you, Mr. thank you, Mr. Chairman. Under discussion, I just have to ask the question <coughs> on the sheet two, on the Liddy School gym. Um, it just it just seems to odd to me because I know we have that room in the middle of it, and the gym is really kind of limited. How anyone can use that? Who U.S. EPA, not knowing what they are. And plus, we have a lot of specialized adaptive, adaptive equipment in that room. I'm just curious on uh, what, who they are and what they're doing with the room. Sure. We received a use of facility. It was actually came from the mayor's office that suggested to contact our, my office um, to request the use of Letty. And the reason why is uh, the U.S., the, the um, EPA, the state division, is going to be working in the where's um, area. And so since they will be working in the where area, they wanted a, to use a school that is in that facility area. So what they're going to do is they will be welcoming the residents of the where area, and that is why they're requesting to be in that area of the gym where it's a little bit open space. And Principal uh, Dr. Belanger will make sure that everything is protected, and, and I am sure that we will be okay. Oh, so that is the United States the, uh, Environmental Protection Agency. Correct. Exactly. <coughs> they needed the space, um, and they don't know how many residents will be showing up, but they wanted to make sure they had enough space for. Now it makes perfect sense. <coughs> Thank you for the explanation. Thank sure. you, Mr. Chairman. So the motion has been made and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? So voted. We have quarterly updates, budget, revolving, and grants. Ms. Monahan. Sure. Um, I'd like to first present the first quarter um, financial report for our FY20 budget. As you can see right at the very bottom, we, are at, we have expended about 25% of our budget, which of course, since we are at our first quarter, it looks as if we are right on target for, um, for our expenses. Um, just so you can understand, as you'll see, some, um, some percentages a little bit higher um, than you would expect. But please know that if you're <coughs> looking at each of the columns, so let's look at, um, we can look at just like a, an appropriation is how much money we have budgeted for it, how much money we have encumbered, so how much money we have set aside for our <coughs> invoices, how much we have spent so far paid out in bills, and then the balance of, um, of course, it is all the uh, subtractions of all of it, and that's how much we have for balance. So I know that maybe you're looking at, like just looking at gas, if we look at, and that's all the way down to the bottom of 4120, it, you'll see that we've expended 93% <coughs> of our budget. We really haven't. If you notice, we did budget um, how much money we budgeted. We then encum encumbered how much money we spent last year, yep. and then so far we've only spent $7,300. So if you can see that, that we're really truly on target, it doesn't, please don't be alarmed with the high percentages. But as you can see, we are monitoring um, certain line items as we do normally, our transportation, our out of district um, numbers. So um, again, we monitor them as we always do month to month. Any questions on the quarter report? Any questions? Mr. Pierre and Mr. Souza? Nope. Next. Okay, moving on to very the- very familiar. <laughs> yeah. Moving on. Looking at the next report, which is our quarterly quarter one FY20 revolving account. Again, you'll see how we had a beginning balance in uh, July of 2019, what we've brought in for each of the accounts through revenue through September 2019, what we have spent out, and what we have as a balance per account. 
Um, currently, we have a balance in, of all revolving accounts, a little over $3 million. And that is in, also including, if you notice the bottom there, we have encumbered $250,000, which was approved by the school committee previously for um, our school security, which is the vestibules. Yeah. So yeah. that is, if you can see there, we did go ahead and encumber that line in one of our revolving accounts. Mr. Chairman? Yes, Mr. Souza. Thank you. Uh, that was my, one of my questions was, is there any, so we, do we have any outstanding encumbrances of anything that we're doing as far as anything that we've already <coughs> authorized and that was the only item because we haven't encumbered anything for the field because we haven't got the specs and we haven't, that hasn't gone out to bid yet. <coughs> so, okay. I think I answered my own question. Oh, good. <laughs> That's a good one then. Thank you. And then I'm talking to myself. That's what all right. Do do? Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Fried Friedman's all done. Friedman's all done, yeah. Yeah. So that 3.2 is real, is real. Correct. Yeah. Thank you. Sure. I'm not going to spend, spend it anymore. Right now, anyway, maybe in about an hour. <laughs> and then uh, uh. our last report that we have is our grants uh, financial report for thus far. As you will see, we do have multiple um, grants that run over fiscal years. As you can see in our notes, um, some of them are one-time awards, like uh, the Perkins Equipment Grant, and then other ones are multi-year awards, and you'll see those as in the notes, note, um, noting year two, and how much, um, like on one of them, they will list exactly how much money we have been awarded. And then, um, as you can see currently, we have about $10 million in uh, um, grant funds alone for the FY20. That's, that's exciting. Just a, one quick question on those uh, grants that say year two only, are those three year grants or are they renewable each year? Some of them are ones considered one time. Other ones, if you're seeing a year two, those are considered that we always do um, apply for. Those are your special ed grants, your early childhood education ones. So those will, we, will do, we will apply after, um, after the years yeah, after are the over. Year. Mm -hmm. And Mr. Chairman. Mr. Souza. Thank you. Just. And I, I, I'm pretty sure I'm reading this right, mm -hmm. so year two. So this is a single year, even though it rolls over from year to year or extends on to the next fiscal year, this is what happens for just this year. Correct, and on certain- It's not, it's not cumulative over, over the life of the grant. Well, some, but some grants will be, although they're awarded in a specific fiscal year, some may be able to, uh, roll, not roll over, but are able to use in over uh, multiple years. And so that's why we just wanted to show what we have currently um, in the budget and what we have this on- This 10,900,000 mm -hmm. is this fiscal year? It's all of the budget, all the monies that we have ranging on all of the grants currently that we have um, for a balance of this year currently, and that could be over um, two fiscal years. Right. So, right. so, yeah, some of the grants we're allowed to carry over if we don't oh, spend. Oh, if we don't spend. Oh, there's a percentage that's, that's what gotcha. we're carrying for this fiscal mm -hmm. year. Yep. That's, that's good news. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I'll uh, make a motion we receive and place on file the uh, financial reports FY20 budget uh, update, revolving accounts, and grants uh, spreadsheet. I'll second that. Motion has been made second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed, so voted. We also have this evening bills payable in the amount of $720,064.99. I reviewed it. I see the usual suspects, and I'd move approval as presented. I agree. Uh, second. Motion made and second, and the only comment I have is how come it gets stapled on the right-hand side versus the left-hand side? We're just mixing things up today. <laughs> there you go. Motion has been made and second. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed, so voted. Aye. <laughs> and finally, the uh, Keep facilities it. update. <laughs> Keep it. Um, thank you. Uh, just wanted to let you know that on November 5th, um, we received a letter from Craig Foley uh, from the Taunton Municipal Lighting Plant that at their regular um, October 30th meeting, the commission voted to donate the following new items for the baseball field at Taunton High School. So they are, um, they will be donating eight poles with sport lights for the high school baseball field. It will also include the labor and the crane to install them because they are quite large um, and, and again to be mounted and all. And then um, 
we will be working with TMLP and also because I was informed that we may need to do some um, really grounding work because they are large metal poles that they would have to be um, in the ground. So I'll be working with um, probably Arson from NURSA to give us some help on um, the engineering piece of what we need to do to install, um, to get everything ready for the installation of um, the poles. So that will be coming. So what we're hoping by next spring, um, we will be able to be having night baseball games. Beautiful. And lastly, I just wanted to let you know that Taunton High School will now accept online payments for athletic, feel, uh, athletic fees. So they will be, um, so we've been moving on, if you do recall, uh, starting last year, we started um, similar to what the city does currently with City Hall Systems. Um, we have started with the Letty Preschool payments, online payments. So what we're trying to do is we're moving forward and the next phase was to begin doing the athletic fees. So families of Taunton High School will be able to pay their athletic fees online so there'll be less work and less handling of money at the school level. So this is great news. It's, um, so they will be beginning that coming up for the winter sports. Excellent. Mr. Chairman, Mr. I, have Sousa. A, I have a question after the, at the end here, for the uh, as part of facilities. So motion to accept. Uh, motion to accept the uh, facilities up. I have one more. I have one more thing under facilities. Oh, Not so you don't you don't want the okay? Go ahead. I just have it. In <laughs> I my, thought you wanted it after the motion was made. No, no. I just had it's part of my notes. Go ahead. So uh, thank you, Ms. Moynihan. I was over at the high school actually twice this week. Um, and I noticed that um, I'm still not, and, I, and I'm not an expert at lights, but the lighting, the <laughs> lighting out there is. Uh, <clears throat> I don't know if we need to get someone to look at a lighting, a lighting expert to look at it. Um, I don't know if there's such a thing as a lighting engineer. There has to be. There's engineers for everything. Mm -hmm. Engineers just love the world, um, but. On the, on, as you're going around the back towards A House, there's lights along the building, they're all out. Lights along the back side, there's no lights. Um, <coughs> the old, over by the field house, the old parking lot, and Mr. Martin's probably <coughs> the only one that knows this. We used to call it the basketball parking lot because there used to be basketball courts there in, in the old days. The lights in there, are, I don't think they're working, or if they are, there, there's only one of them working, or very dim. And then in the old, and please forgive this because I got no other way to describe it. The old jock lot, those, there's new lights in there, but I th I've seen flashlights that are better than the lights that are in there. And I, I don't know what the problem is there. So th that's just the, uh, my observation. Now, I think it would behoove us to hire, to look into having someone look at the lighting and they don't have to have anybody from our municipal agency uh, down uh, down on Weir Street that could help us out just what what the proper lighting is and how we could improve it I think there's um, I'm, I'm concerned about especially in the back of the building but in these other lots with with some illicit activities going on or potentially a safety issue with um, males or females uh, with, with the lack of lighting and whether we have the right lighting one do we have the right lighting two is the lighting that we have at uh, working properly and needs to be replaced or made and maintained, et cetera. I guess that's the end of my, my story, Mr. Martin. Back to you, Mr. Chairman. Little history. Prior to the renovation of the high school, we had in the parking lot behind the Alexo skating rink, we had three towers behind the Parker School overlooking the entrance to the uh, locker room, field house area, football area. We had a tower outside of the, what we refer to as the basketball courts. I believe we had a tower. And in all cases, under the renovation, they were either taken down or cut. Yeah. Because they were not, is that it? They were not part of the design or pleasing to the eye. <laughs> because they were towers with huge halogen lights on them. That worked. That worked. Mm -hmm. uh, but they were all taken down. So now we have these teardrop little lights everywhere, which really show light directly down. They're, they're like spotlights almost. Yeah. 
They're not floodlights. So I don't know if any of those towers are still up. I, you know, I'd have to go out and look. Uh, but even if they are up, they've the wires have been pulled. So it would be a lot of work to. I think we uh, did. We get a quote, did you? At some point in time, get an estimate yeah, on what yeah. it would cost to rewire those. I'm going to put my uh, old facility hat on. So I, I do believe Mr. Butler on the city side has replaced some of the lights that Mr. Martin you're, you're referencing. Uh, there should be no excuse for the wall packs to be out. The wall packs should be replaced. Uh, we do do quarterly lighting updates, so we can have that. That might be time. So, so we can have that. We can have that done. <coughs> um, so we'll conduct a lighting audit. Uh, we'll work with the city. I believe the issue in the past has been access to a bucket truck, which I believe they do have. If they don't have a bucket truck, we'll reach out to the TMLP, as I've done in the past uh, when I was in Mrs. Moynihan's position, and ask them to come in and replace the lights for us. Yeah. If I may, Mr. Um, Mr. Martin, it's, um, we did conduct the audit, the light audit, um, and we do have several lights that are out. Um, I have put them in um, into facility, dude, to have the city replace the lights. I'm sure that it may not be the best of lighting. Like you said, there's some teardrop and they are different, um, but there are multiple lights that are out. Um, and again, you, you did say that is true. They do need access, Mr. Cabral, um, with a bucket truck. And unfortunately, very soon they will lose that access because they'll be at the Taunton Green getting everything ready for the holidays. So um, that might be something that we could call, uh, reach out to TMLP and ask for some help in assisting in replacing the lights. But there are several of them that have been noted that need to be replaced. Well, that, that's part of the, that's, that's very good. Uh, Mr. Chairman, um, uh, Mr. Cabral, if you could, uh, Ms. Moynihan, if you could um, use your positions to kind of facilitate this. I think it's, it's a safety issue when we're, they, at least the lights that are there be replaced so all the lights at least are working. I think it's a safety issue for the students. I think it's a safety issue for the public. I think we need to get that. And it's not our fault. It's just that this is kind of uh, working with the city to get the proper electricians or whoever has it. And um, I don't know if Mr. Co Mr. Uh, Cabral and Ms. Moynihan need to have a, a long ladder um, or whatever the case may be. And then I think the second part of the story is do we have, Long range, not to say my, my mm. long range, Mr. Uh, DeMello is not here, my long range planning subcommittee, but long range, I think we should um, take a second look at what's out there as far as, if even after everything is, if is I, done. If I could, I believe the lighting that Mr. Butler has installed over the last two or three years Whoa. has addressed the concerns the that you raised. Concerns that we raised I think, before. Yeah, I know they've added a wall pack outside the entrance to the field house yep. that the student athletes use. Yep. We added a tower. In, along the driveway uh, leading to the stadium and he has added to, uh, lights in the back parking lot along the baseball field yep. I believe we do have a tower in the maintenance lot is what we call it now yeah. and also along Alexo they have replaced those lights so I think it's just a matter of replacing the bulb so we'll look into that right. and I, I believe we have ad added sufficient lighting now thank you and also consider timers because I know sometimes those go out of whack most of those are on timers. Yeah. If not all. Okay. Yeah, they should be on timers. That's right. And the other thing is, Mr. Souza, is that a motion or? Motion, Ms. yes. It's a mo that part of the, that's, a, that's a motion. To look into the lighting situation. Into the lighting situation. Would you, would you say to uh, not just the high school, but all facilities? Yes, all facilities. Make sure all facilities, are, especially, um, yes. especially now that it's dark. All, <laughs> it's dark at four o'clock. Because well, based on the uh, use of facilities report that we did tonight, all these facilities are being used, used at night. At night, so which which is past four o'clock now. Which is which is great <laughs> that they're being used, but also we want people it, to be comfortable. Just give us an update. Uh, yeah, part of that motion would be just to give us an update on all facilities, especially the big one over here. But all make sure that all of them in uh, um, this is this is the Paramount one over here. But so that's, that's my there motion. A second to the motion. Yep. Motion remain second. Any further discussion? Any further uh, on the motion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Anything else on the facilities? All set, thank you. Motion to accept the facilities update. Second. Oh. All in favor? Aye. Aye. I've never heard that one before. Oh, one more thing. Is the uh, FY21 budget. 
on its way? <laughs> it sure is, and we've actually done some updates to it. We're moving into the new age, and yes, we are. We've rolled it out simply with the principals at our, and, um, and department heads at our last all-admin meeting. I'm working with my admin assistant, Ann Zebrick, to make sure that everything is updated and ready to go. So we should be ready to go um, with all updated um, items, budget items, and uh, forms in the drives by tomorrow morning. <laughs> Everyone thinks that you just sit back and relax because the budget's a quarter of the way through, and, but you're already working on next year. Gotcha. Three budgets, as you Always three. Yeah. Always three. FY 19, 20, and 21. Nice. All right. Motion to adjourn. Motion made and seconded. Second. All those in favor. Aye. Aye. Opposed, so vote to adjourn. Thank you, Steve. <laughs> Good job, everyone. Good job, Mr. Superintendent. Thank you. Uh, States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Oh, say, can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming? Broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare, the bombs bursting in. still there oh say does that star spangled then yet wave or the land of the free and the home of the brave Madam Secretary. Lord, as we begin this session, let us acknowledge your goodness and mercy and ask your blessings on all our deliberations. We thank you for this opportunity to be of service to our community and to the young people entrusted to our care. Thank you. Madam Secretary, roll call, please. Mr. Souza? Present. Mr. Martin? Present. Mr. Fiore? Present. Mr. DeMello? Present. Mrs. Fagans? Present. <coughs> Mr. O'Brien? Present. And I'd like to say one other thing, and yes. sitting at the table joining us is um, Nate Pulowski, who just recently got elected to the school committee for the next two years. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you. For, uh, next item is approval of minutes from October 16th, 2019. Second. Okay, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed, so voted. Next item is student council representative report from Aislinn Campbell. Ms. Campbell, please. Good evening, members of the school committee. I am Aislinn Campbell, representing Taunton High School Student Council. I'll start with some events we've had at Taunton High. First, we had the THS Super Bowl on November 6th, which was very successful. Many people attended and enjoyed soups made by Taunton High's culinary, along with several nearby restaurants. We also had the THS DECA induction for the 2019-2020 school year. 260 members were inducted. The football team also won an exciting game against Weymouth. Taunton High enjoyed Mr. Cabral's site visit today where he saw many students and staff members. And tomorrow is the National Honor Society induction at 6.30 in the auditorium where 110 juniors and seniors will be inducted. On November 21st, we have an early release in where parent-teacher conferences will be held. 
Also, for our upcoming advisory, we will do our notes, notes of appreci appreciation, where each student can write an appreciation note to a teacher from any school. As for student council, Spirit Week starts this Friday, beginning with Black and Orange Day and our pep rally on fr this Friday. And Monday, we have our Class Colors Day and our Powder Puff game. Tuesday, we have Outer Space Day and our dodgeball game. And Wednesday, we have Decades Day and Trivia. And on Thursday, we have Boston Sports Day and the Thanksgiving Basket Hunt. And on Friday, we have Fitness Friday and our Homecoming Dance. And the following Monday, we have America Monday. And, the, and Tuesday, we have Twin Day. And with that, my report is complete. Thank you. Motion we accept the report. Second. On discussion, Mr. DeMello, please. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, through you, uh, Chairman, to Superintendent. 110 on the uh, National Honor Society. Is that an all-time high, or is that normal? I'll find it seems out. awfully high, which is I'll great. Yeah, well, obviously, we want we, we hope that it's high, but uh, I'll find out in the next month. Okay, thank you. That's all. Thank you, thank you Mr. DeMello. And just... Mrs. Campbell, if you want to tell us, you're new to us here. You're going to be covering now. You'll be our new student council representative. Uh, tell us a tiny bit about yourself so we can all get to know you. What grade are you in? I'm a sophomore. All right. Well, welcome aboard, and uh, thank you very much. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed, so voted. Next item on the agenda is Thanks. public input. We have one item. It's Mr. Trevor Costa, 40 Morgan Drive. You come to the podium, please. Hi. How's everyone doing tonight? Very good. Very well, thank you. My name is Trevor Costa. I am 18 years of age and I'm currently enrolled at Taunton High School as a senior. I'm coming in front of the committee tonight just to offer my sincerest congratulations to the incumbent school committee members and a newly elected member, Nathan Pulowski. I want to also use this platform to congratulate all other candidates on their run for Taunton School Committee and all the work they put forth. I also have a message for Mr. O'Brien. I want to sincerely thank you for your service for the Taunton School Committee, and I wish for nothing for the best in your future endeavors. Thank you. And I deeply appreciate the work and selflessness that Superintendent Cabral and the Taunton, and the Taunton School Committee members put forward for all of Taunton Public Schools, students, staffs, and family. And I, on behalf of myself and so many others in the school system here in Taunton, I thank you for the, your continued work for this community, and I hope for nothing but the best for all of you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Next item on the agenda referred to uh, Superintendent Cabral for his athletic department slash performing arts department updates, please. Thank you, Chairman O'Brien. So this evening we have uh, with us, we have Mr. Arc Vianelli, our athletic director, and we have Mr. Jim Fry, who is director of our performing arts. So they're going to do a combined presentation to provide you with some updates and some highlights in their specific departments. And I think you'll notice a common theme as they go through the presentation. So with that said, I'll turn things over to them. And I'll just note that I am very proud of the work that they put forward. Uh, they always, they're very selfless, and they're always looking at ways to improve. They, they truly demonstrate and exemplify what it means to have a growth mindset and to put the needs of others first. Mr. Cabral, thank you for those kind words. Um, I'd like to thank the school committee and Mr. Cabral for allowing us to come in front of you tonight. Um, it's been a whirlwind, as you say. Last, I mean, we haven't spoken since last year when we won the state baseball championship, which I believe December 18th we'll be celebrating that, Mr. Cabral, is that correct? So we look forward that night to have all the kids come back, get their jackets and rings in front of the school committee. So that'll be a good night. Uh, just like to speak quickly, um, our fall student athlete participation numbers got it listed from 2000, our numbers in 2012-13, to 17-18 to last year, 18-19. As you can see, it varies a little bit. 17-18, we were up from the 416, but 18-19 at 420. All depends on different things. Um, but as you see, when we go to the winter, our numbers have increased drastically, um, especially in the track program. Um, we've gone to 92 and 90 in the winter track program. And it's just outstanding of what our staff and what our kids are being involved in. They're doing such a great job. Spring numbers, same thing with the track. The track brings that numbers up, but our, all our other numbers have been stable and rising. And that's because of the support of the committee. 
you know, four baseball teams, four softball teams, uh, four boys basketball teams, four girls basketball teams. What we are able to do, we are the envy of our league, the Hockamock League, and people around the state. Because we support, this community, this committee has supported athletics greatly. When I have conversations with my colleagues, they go, well, we can't do this or we can't do that. I don't have those problems here. And we can do those things because of the support that we get from everybody in the city. So it's a, it's a great joint effort and we greatly appreciate it. If you look at our total numbers, we've gone from 994 student athletes. That number's a little, a little tricky because I count, if you, if you were a three sport athlete, you were counted three times, just so you know that. So if you were a fall, winter, and spring athlete, you were counted three times. But we've gone from 994 to last uh, 17, 18, 1,177 to 18, 19, 1,274 student athletes. We keep growing. I don't know if we can continue this pace because I don't know if we have enough kids or enough space. Uh, we have 24 programs and 51 teams. Fall athletic teams, we have four teams in volleyball. We have four teams in boys soccer. Um, our girls soccer programs in moving up, so we're expecting to have another, a third team, but we have nine programs and 20 teams. Um, our freshman football numbers with the eighth grade and ninth grade combined were 55, and we've kept that number to, I think it's about 50, so we haven't lost too many kids. So nine programs, 20 teams in the fall. The winter, same thing, nine programs, 16 teams. Uh, we only have one winter track team, both boys and girls, but our numbers are close to 100. Um, we do run some JV meets, but we just consider there's not, there is not considered a JV track team. It's just everyone's on the varsity team in the varsity program. Four boys basketball teams, four girls basketball teams. So it's, we're offering a lot of things that people don't offer. And same thing in the spring, nine programs, 16 teams, four baseball teams. Um, we're fortunate, I scheduled 38 freshman baseball games. We combined the eighth and ninth graders together because there's not eighth grade baseball in most of Massachusetts. Combined the eighth and ninth grade, had a black team and an orange team. Uh, we scheduled 38 games. They played 19 apiece. Got a little crazy there when it started raining, but we were able to get most of those in. So we're very, very fortunate. We have a lot of kids that have that opportunity to participate. The Hockamock League scheduling. The Hockamock League realigns every two years, grades nine through 12, based on the current enrollment. So there's six schools in each division. We're in the Kelly Rex with Franklin, Mansfield, King Phillip, Attleboro, and Olive Rames. The smaller division, Davenport, Canton, Foxborough, Stoughton, Milford, North Attleboro, and Sharon. What's gonna happen come, we go from the December, and at the December 1st principals meeting, all the October 1st enrollment numbers have to come in from the, school, from the schools. Each principal has to certify their numbers with DESE, and then the enrollments the, the divisional alignments might change depending on enrollments, strictly based on enrollment. So there's a couple of teams that might flip. We'll always be high, we'll always be in the Kelly Racks. <clears throat> concerns with, one of my concerns is finding quality opponents for the sub varsity competitions, especially at the eighth grade and freshman levels. Areas of concern, football, boys soccer, boys basketball, baseball and softball. It's getting hotter and hotter. People are not, school systems are not supporting the teams, they're cutting back. They don't have the participation numbers that we do. Cutting back, not having teams. So it's getting harder and harder to find teams. Playing teams three or four times. But something that we have to do to provide those opportunities. A lot of times with the eighth grade teams, we will play local, like in Bristol Plymouth. Eighth grade boys basketball is gonna play their freshman team. So we will play Southeastern Vogue, freshman. So a lot of times we'll put our eighth grade teams against freshman teams, and they won't, they'll be able to compete, which is a good thing. The more we, opportunities we get these kids to compete, it's a better learning experience. Unified sports, I'll tell you, this has been one of the most rewarding, positive things that goes on in our building. Um, we have basketball, bowling, and spring track right now. Basketball, we just completed basketball. We have our own league in the Hawk. We played five other Hawk schools in basketball. 
Um, it's a great combination of regular education students and special education students. We probably had 30 kids participating. Um, kids come to the games, they cheer their students on. Now they get to know each other, they see each other in the hallways, they talk to each other. It's just a rewarding experience for everybody involved. Future items of interest, our middle school sports, grades five through seven. I know when speaking with the principals, they're interested in adding things, flag football, field hockey, volleyball. Currently we have cross country basketball and soccer, but many school systems are eliminating those athletic teams at that level. Um, that's something that we have to look at. Another area of interest is the MIAA tournament changes. They are considering major changes to the tournament, which will affect everybody. They're talking about going to a statewide tournament. Because how it works, it's all done by sections right now, south, north, central, west. What's happened a lot of times is the south teams have to go through the toughest competition, south and the north, east, east and Massachusetts. Central and West might only have to play two or three games to get to the state semifinals, where North and South, Eastern Mass schools, have to go through five or six games to get to the state semifinals. So they're talking about balancing the whole state without any sections. So they're talking about going five divisions of 75 schools each based on enrollment. And if the number one seed is Taunton, and the number 16 seed is Pittsfield, Pittsfield's coming to Taunton, or vice versa. So that's what they're talking about. Um, there could be a lot of travel, a lot of travel once it comes to the state tournament. So they're working through that this year. They're talking about balancing sections. Um, a decision's gonna be supposedly made at a statewide meeting in January or February, so I will keep you posted. Um, our athletic facility update, uh, the baseball field, multi-purpose baseball field, um, has been outstanding. Uh, we've used it this year um, for field hockey. We've used it for soccer, um, obviously baseball in the spring. Um, we didn't have other schools last baseball season. We were fortunate that we didn't have a lot of snow, but we had all four of our teams in tryouts on that field the first day of practice. We didn't have to go inside. We were able to get outside on the turf. Um, it was great. We didn't have any rain outs. We held one game for, we had a rain delay for two hours. We, told, we were ahead, scored like 15 runs in three innings. Told the umpires they weren't going anywhere until it was dark. We were finishing, the storm went through. We didn't have to worry about the field. We played. Um, but everybody's been involved in it and that was the goal of this committee in our city to make sure that it was a multi-purpose field that a lot of kids were able to use that and we've done that with soccer and field hockey in the fall it's been great um we are looking at the stadium and track um we've gotten we've been great it's been great we've gotten 12 years i believe it's 12 years out of the track and the turf now we have to look at it's, it's getting worn we have to look at you know and we're going to start that process of looking at it um, and we're also looking at our locker room usage. With 1,274 kids, I believe, those locker rooms are packed. 2.30 to 2 o'clock to 2.45, it's a busy area down there. So we're looking at different plans to see how we can monitor that and keep things clean because we've got an outstanding facility and we want to keep it up to date. And that's what I have. Any questions? Ms. Fagan, then Mr. Souza, then Mr. DeMello, please. Yeah, just, just a quick question, Mr. Ottavianelli. The, um, when you talk about not having those programs in the middle school, what does that do to the idea of a FETA system for the high school? Well, I, I mean, think that we, we're fortunate that we support that. So now we have to look at it. If we don't have competition to play against, what is the best way that we can get our kids involved to keep that feeder system? Do we do clinics? Do we do in-house? You know, like we do with cross country and basketball right now, we go Martin, Friedman, Parker, and they all play each other. Do we keep that going? Do we offer more things? Because I know the volleyball people are interested in running stuff. Field hockey's interested. So we're just gonna look at the overall schedule, talk to the principals, 
see what they want to do, what we can offer more, and how can we do it for the best way to keep that feeder system. What, what I'm also concerned about, though, is the people that we play, all the other teams we play, if they don't have those kids coming up, I mean, what are they... Is they they don't give that any thought, or is it just a monetary? They're, they're thing counting on it? their. I guess they're counting on their youth leagues. But we're fortunate. We're in the position where we support that. It's important to our city. Um, some towns, it isn't. We're in a very very good situation. We're grateful for that. Thank you, Mr. Souza. Then Mr. Demello. Please. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, thank you, Mr. Alvianelli. A uh, couple of couple of tag, uh, tag on to my colleague Mrs. Fagan's questions. Uh, I appreciate the thought about thinking outside the box with those, uh, the middle school and working hard on that program. I know we've always talked about that and it continues to grow and we continue to do different things. And certainly outside the box as far as the competition for the eighth and ninth grade uh, sports teams, thinking outside the box, BP and other, other areas, how we have to do that, uh, that that's helpful. We certainly don't want to see them uh, fall by the wayside. So that's good. That continues that feeder, feeder feeding up towards the upper grades. And um, finally, I hope the MIAA is cognizant of the fact that kids from Taunton are going to Pittsfield on a school night and are coming back to going to school the next day. That has been the discussion that we've had a number of workshops that we've all had to go to <laughs> and discussions. And that's been a big part of that discussion. I, 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 I appreciate that because that's, that's, we all have, we all know why we're here. And um, that's the biggest thing is um, making sure that they're ready to go in the next, it's, it's tough, but we're being battered around in so many different directions with homework and um, keeping homework up, keeping grades up and uh, getting ready for college, you know, especially in the upper grades, um, <coughs> traveling, uh, at that age is tough, but uh, I think that's why the discussion has continued, and I think right. it's going to trying evolve. To, trying to come up with a solution, a reasonable solution. Yeah, I appreciate that. That's why I wanted to keep you updated on where it I was going. I appreciate that. That's that's the most important thing. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Sousa. Mr. Demello, please. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. Otto Vianelli, thank you for the presentation. But I think I can uh, answer the response of why our student athletes in track went up in both both boys and girls. If you recall about a year ago, we had a lot of parents concerned that there weren't uni uniforms that were available for all these team members. They're available. <laughs> That's exactly what I was leading to. Uh, that was brought to your attention. You came before us, and we as a committee supported that. And that may be one of the reasons mm -hmm. why we have so many new members. But uh, the second item I'd like to mention is, uh, I know we've talked about this. I know it's quite a task. I'm still very interested in GPA. Uh, GPA of where we lie, uh, Basically, the numbers you presented tonight is about 15%, a little bit higher than 15%. About 8,000 students are involved in athletics, give or take. Uh, and I think it's important that uh, we understand uh, the value of being in a team sport and what it can do to build relationships amongst our team players. Like you said, uh, you know, we, we have different <coughs> examples of how people are talking to each other in the hallways, how people bond. That's going to carry outside of the classroom. It's going to carry inside the classroom. So I think it's very, very important that we, when we have some time, when we have some more sophisticated uh, resources to evaluate these statistics, I think that's very, very important to share with everybody that, that really cares about public schools and what we do here, because we do a great thing. And I think it adds a lot of value uh, to show that uh, our student athletes are definitely probably performing a little bit better. And I'm not just saying student athletes, anything to do with the performing arts, anything that deals with a team type of atmosphere, I think uh, it's a valid, a valid uh, research topic to discover. Thank you. If I may. Superintendent Cabral, please. And so re remembering that conversation last year, Mr. DeMello, it did not fall on deaf ears. So uh, we do have a mechanism. It's called Donna Bins. So Donna Bins has been, uh, she collected the list of students who participated in athletics last year and she has uh, added all their grades from last year. So we're in the process of finalizing that document. So I will include it in a future superintendent's report just so we can see if there is a correlation between participation in sports and improved um, academic performance in the classroom. So I will have that for you in the near future. Sure. Th thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, and again, if 
I, I know we were just targeting uh, athletic teams. Uh, I, I think if we could expand it out, and, I, and listen, I don't want to make more work than what we have to, but I think it's a, it's a value-added uh, uh, report that could go a long way. No, I agree, and uh, and the other reason I agree is when it comes to uh, you know communicating with our parents and echoing what Mr. Matos has constantly stated, a connected student is a better student. So we'll demonstrate that not only socially will you benefit, but academically, we I believe we will show that there is a correlation. Great, thank you. Mr. Demel, to your point and Mr. Cabral's point, we've also, that co cooperation and collaboration, I know Mr. Frag, <coughs> the cooperation between all the different clubs and all the different activities that go on in our building, um, not only, we all have a good relationship and it's all for the betterment of the students. So we get along very well, we help each other out. Um, I work with the guidance department Future plans for college, we've been meeting with parents, sitting down, okay, we need to go this way on your schedule, we need to look at these schools, what are you interested in? All those different things that you're talking about are starting to be put in place. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Mr. DeMello. Mr. Martin, please. <clears throat> Mr. Ottavelli, thank you for a great uh, report. Uh, I don't know if you're sticking around, but I've got two issues which are going to come up later under uh, some of our subcommittee meetings. That pertain I can to if the, you would like. What's that? I can if you would like. That pertain to the athletic department. So, you know, if you, if you, if you, if you could, I think it'll be fairly quick. Sure, absolutely. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Martin. Any further questions for Mr. Ottavinelli? All right, Superintendent Carroll. Thank you for your time. Thank you. So we just covered athletics, so now I think it's only appropriate that we ask Mr. Fry to share his presentation on performing arts. Thank and you very as much. Mr. As Mr. Jakes is getting the presentation ready, uh, I, will, I would like to state publicly that I want to say at least 10, 12 years ago, we saw a dramatic change in the middle school program and the way band was delivered. And I believe since then, I think Mr. Fry will demonstrate that there's been tremendous growth since we made some simple changes as far as when students uh, participate in band and that growth has continued on to high school. So I do want to credit Mr. Fry for being very forward thinking. It was his suggestion to make the changes years ago. And despite people not believing or thinking to the contrary that we wouldn't see the benefit, I think his presentation will demonstrate that we need to keep thinking differently. We need to keep thinking outside the box and maximizing the time and the resources that we have available to us. Thank you for the invitation. I'm always happy to uh, share news, especially good news. The uh, Performing Arts Department, just for a frame of reference, we're really talking about music and drama in the Taunton Public Schools. We don't have a dance program, uh, but not as yet, but our dance falls within the drama, the scope of the drama programs that we have. Uh, the, the major points that we'll go through, the, just the staff that we have, growth that we've experienced, accomplishments and goals for the future. We teach music for the most part in uh, the performing arts. That's the, the bulk of what we do because music is the part of the performing arts that happens during the school day. Our entire music staff is 12 teachers. We have four in the elementaries, three middle school general music and chorus teachers, one high school chorus teacher, and then four band directors that uh, handle all the music classes for the school system. Every elementary school student takes music uh, once a week or once every six days. It works out to about 30 hours, of, nearly 30 hours of instruction in music over the course of the year. Uh, and that's handled with those four elementary music teachers. So in pre-K through seven, the music classes exist for all students. And our philosophy on what we're teaching in all of our music classes we're teaching music for the sake of music, and we're teaching uh, thinking and learning skills all along. The major, the major point of the end of general music for all students, it's in grade seven, and our whole focus is on responding to music, but really it's just responding to anything, <coughs> because we're just trying to take these students and through the discipline of music, uh, help them to write, help them to read, listen, take information in, form opinion, and express it. Uh, 
So in our, the, the general music that everyone takes, that goes up through grade seven. And once they come to Taunton High School, then all music classes are elective. We <laughs> offer courses in uh, chorus, in band, and two general music course electives in the high school. We have a guitar class that's only a couple years old that's been very popular. And we have a music theory class that's for the higher, uh, the more advanced music students, especially those who plan to study this as a, as a major field after high school. You can see that our elective program enrollments are in the hundreds. Uh, in the fourth grade, for example, the fourth grade chorus across the city, when we combine all of them, there are 390 fourth graders who sing in the choruses. And I'm sure you're aware, on average, our, our classes range, I always have the number 600 in my mind, but we range around the six, uh, 600 to 650s. Um, this year, 390 are in fourth grade chorus. In the middle schools, there are fewer because they have more opportunities. They're, they're choosing to perform with chorus or not. Uh, so the middle school choruses total 322 this year. Middle school band, grade five, six, seven. Grade five is when they start playing in bands. Uh, we have 371 in middle school band. The high school chorus is 170 and the high school band is 246, which I'm very pleased with. Um, outside of the music classes, we have other opportunities for students to participate in music and performing arts, including singing clubs that meet after school or music clubs after school. Uh, we have drama club in Parker and Martin and Taunton High, and this year not at Friedman, and we're working to reestablish that next year. We have a high school drama club, which is huge, and uh, they put on quite a big show, and our big shows this year will be in April. I hope that you'll attend. In terms of growth, our recent new programs that we've established, we have uh, brought the ukulele into the music classes at Parker, giving that a shot. And if you are unfamiliar with ukulele, just think Tiny Tim. Um, and it's, it's a four-stringed almost guitar. And it works great for the, smaller, sm for the smaller hands, especially grade four, five, six. Um, Parker has established a music club both of those are thanks to Mrs. Snow, the music teacher at Parker, who we've had for a couple of years and is definitely growing things over there. We established that Taunton High guitar class in 2017. We can only fit 20 students in, and it's maxed out uh, the, the three years. This will be the third year. Uh, it's maxed out at the 20 students, and we're, we'll have to look at maybe adding sections of that uh, in the future. In terms of changes, uh, we, ex we changed the way that we approach middle school drama because if you go back several years, we had some huge shows in the middle schools. I know a few of you at the table either had children or were principal of the school when there, we had huge shows in the middle school. And we determined that in our, our opinion that was not really probably developmentally appropriate for the middle school age students. Um, those of you whose children went through the program saw them come home exhausted. Some of you came home exhausted, and uh, that's a lot for a middle school student. Uh, so we, we have revamped the way that we run the middle school drama programs, which is actually the major reason why there is no drama at Friedman right now, be, because change is hard, and so there's been a, a couple of years where we haven't had a drama program at Friedman uh, per se. We've been handling those drama opportunities through their music class and music club experiences. Um, we have also changed the way that we run the Taunton High choirs uh, for the, specifically for ninth graders. We had found that there was almost a bottleneck in enrollment in eighth grade the way that we ran the choir before. The students would come to the eighth grade choir and then the experience was significantly different from middle school chorus just because all of a sudden you're singing for 87 minutes rather than every few days for 40. Uh, so we actually, what we did was we took the eighth and ninth graders, put them together for a mixed choir and it's, it's gone just really well. And the students' performance uh, 
proficiency, the students' enjoyment of the class as reported by themselves, and the, the, the numbers of students enrolled shows that, that that's gone pretty well. Recently, we have had an uptick in the number of students accepted to district and all state festivals. We have a good representation where we average four or five students going to the all state festival each year. When you compare to other uh, urban districts, we're, pretty, we're doing pretty well. And when you compare to all districts in Massachusetts, you know, some of the more affluent communities do send more kids than that. Um, but we're pretty pleased where that used to be a big old zero. And so over the last several years, that's gone up to four or five most years. The, region, the district festival, we have more students auditioning than ever. We have 34 signed up to audition for uh, both the junior and senior festivals. Um, we have hosted the junior festival several times. And in spite of the disruption that it causes to the school, the, the high school has been very accommodating. They keep asking us to do it again this year, but I said, no, it's too disruptive to do all the time. But um, we're very pleased that we've been able to get those numbers pumped up as high as they have. When I have an enrollment chart, I always like to see the lines going up. So I felt like I definitely wanted to share that. Um, we have, uh, the, since 2012, the band at, Ta I, I have specific numbers for Taunton High just because that's where I started tracking it years ago. Um, since 2012, the band has grown at Taunton High from 147 to 246. I like to thank Mr. Bachman, my predecessor, uh, for making me look great. It really is that we brought the eighth grade to the high school and the kids didn't run from the program. So the, we, once we brought the eighth grade to the high school, that helped us out a lot. Um, the Taunton High music, general music expanded with guitar, I said. Um, overall, we've had a much higher number of selections between chorus, band, and general music, gone from 358 to 455. And a big thing is our music courses at Taunton High are offered, you can, you can either take a half year one semester course, or you can enroll for the whole year. And the students have a certain number of electives that they can choose, and a number of ours choose to take the full year course now, where in the pre previous years, the, it was around 182. Now we're all the way up to 245 who are electing into the full year of the course, which is allowing them deeper study and, uh, and more proficiency. Since our major focus is not just the performance of the music, but it's the learning and thinking skills that underlie all that, then I, I'm pretty pleased to, to say that we're able to affect a higher number of students this way. We have all the way, we're all the way up to 700 semesters of music classes taken in a year at Taunton High School. Uh, previously, that was down at 540. 700 semesters of music classes in basically two classrooms, which is pretty high. If you think a, an English class does about 240 s students a year in a room, and we are up at 700 for the two classrooms, that's, I, I'm pretty pleased to, to see that. Um, our eighth grade band is 104 students in one class this year. Um, it's a wonderful problem for us to have. We, we have had to, for the first time this year, take that eighth grade band and split them into two separate sections. We've always just, they, they literally don't fit in the band room. So we, we have had to split that class into two groups. We split them between the band and chorus rooms. Mr. McKenzie and I co-teach those guys. And what I'm really happy to see in terms of growth is literature choices uh, coming into alignment across all the schools. We have, an, we, we choose, as music teachers, we choose all of the literature that we're going to perform and practice and learn and let the students experience. And we've had a number of years where a teacher in one school would like a certain type of song, and then it didn't necessarily match and w with another across town at another elementary. But now all the teachers are on the much more the same page, so the students are getting more similar experiences across the city and a wide variety of literature. Um, we've made some really nice updates. We updated the lighting systems at Taunton High and Friedman. We were able to bring in some LED lights that we, were, were, we never had previously. 
uh, which has made a huge difference for our, not only our performance look, but also the, uh, the technical theater experience for our students, because they do all the work. In, when, once they get to high school, they have to learn to run the lights. And we are very happy, the students that leave Taunton High and go major in technical theater actually come to us and report frequently that they're getting, to, they got to use equipment in high school that they don't get to until late in college. And so we're giving them a pretty advanced experience. Um, really pleased to report that. A few years ago, we purchased an inventory of nearly a hundred, uh, over a hundred band instruments for students in, who, students in need uh, who couldn't afford their own instruments. And about 100 students in the city are borrowing instruments now, where previously they would have been priced right out of the band program. That's also one contributing factor, I'm sure, to our increased enrollment. We are seeing a lot more band uh, school-owned instruments being used. So I'm really pleased to see the, the financial barriers taken out of their way. Uh, Recently, we've, uh, our accomplishments, we have established a regular biennial trip where last year we went to Disney World at April vacation time with the high school band and next year we're hoping to go to Dallas. <coughs> One of the most influential trip experiences that we do with our students is actually a trip to Dallas where we tour the city, we listen to and perform music, we also uh, go to the, uh, the Book Depository Museum and visit the JFK assassination sites. We go to uh, well, a rodeo. It's an experience that our Taunton kids do not, get, do not get on their own very often. And actually, when I ask them upon graduation about their trips that they took, I say, how'd you like Disney? How'd you like Dallas? If I had to cancel one, which one should we keep? And they say, always keep Dallas. Keep going back to Dallas. And it's a very influential trip on a number of kids. You know, I, I really enjoy Taunton, but I think that one of the best things we can do is get the kids out of Taunton for a little bit and, and see, the, see other parts of the country, and we know a lot of them would never make their way to Dallas or Texas at all. Um, we've won some great awards. We've, the band has been doing pretty well in the last few years. We, got, we won gold medals at our state contest, uh, the Micah Band Festival in 15 and 18, we got to play at Mechanics Hall Worcester and then Symphony Hall in, uh, in Boston as a show, part of a showcase festival. Our high school drama club has won a numerous awards at the METG theater festivals. Uh, we've hosted the, the district festivals, like I said. And one thing that I'm really pleased with is a few years back, Mr. McKenzie had the idea to uh, establish a South Shore Exchange concert well, an exchange concert. Performing arts are collaborative, not competitive in general. And we approached some other schools, just people that we happen to be friendly with, and said, hey, what if we all just went to a room and played some music one day? And, uh, and we did. We established this South Shore Exchange concert for, for the high school bands. And it's been tremendous. We collaborated with schools including Pembroke, Situate, Duxbury, uh, several more. And we're actually, that, that exchange has, has got rolling to a point where we think that actually we're going to realign ourselves with some Hockamock League school bands. Um, and we're going we're gonna to start that next year uh, because together, we, all of those programs in the South Shore Exchange grew and developed together. Um, whether you're the best band at that day or, or the band that has the farthest to grow. It's, it's a tremendous experience, so we're looking forward to doing that with a whole new group of schools that we actually interact with other places through the athletics and, and uh, more local rather than all those folks that are out east. We've put out about 20 music performance <laughs> production and engineer and education majors. So our high school programs are successfully leading students into careers uh, it directly in the field of music. Like I said, mostly our students don't go study this professionally, but they're learning the thinking and learning skills. However, some are prepared to attend some pretty good music schools, um, and they're making careers in music, I'm pleased to, to say. We have had many theater and 
dance majors that have gone through our drama programs, even though they're after school clubs, those students report that they had a significant impact on, on, their, uh, on their track. And in most areas, our alumni are reporting, especially in music, that they are going out prepared and they're giving us good feedback about what they would like to see uh, in terms of changes. Some goals for the future uh, are just things that we're, we're looking for. At Martin, we need to update the lighting and sound system. Um, we're making the best use of the facilities that we have. They are full, and we appreciate the, uh, the thought that the school committee has already given to, to those issues. And I'm not going to get every student at Taunton High School to take a music class, and if I did, I don't know where I'd put them. But we are still experiencing growth, and, and, and I, I'm not sure how long the growth will continue because we'll, we'll reach a logical point of where that's the kids that are going to take these classes. But we're still growing, and I'm pleased to, uh, to be part of this program. Happy to answer any questions. Mr. Souza, please. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Well, Mr. Fry, we've come a long way. Yes, sir. Come a long way. Um, what else can we do? Do you have any additional <laughs> ideas? What else can we do? I'm just putting you on the spot for a second. I'm just kind of being facetious there for a second. Mm -hmm. um, certainly, um, I like the way the expansion has gone. I think that uh, there's always more we can do with <clears throat> We're limited by space and people, I think, is the only limit. I think your, your, uh, your uh, leadership is, um, we can continue to grow. Uh, I know we talked about the facilities. We had the, my colleague will give his report in a little while about, uh, but uh, if you could just talk for one minute, I have three other items, but if you could just talk for one minute about the issues you have now with the current band room. Our band room is physically small and at the bottom of a small set of stairs and we have a lot of, a lot of bodies and equipment that need to move in and out. As I mentioned, that eighth grade band class is 104 students. They don't comfortably fit in that room. We will, we can squeeze them in, we, but we would never want to squeeze in 104 students and a couple band directors day after day. Uh, in addition to the small footprint of the band room, um, the, the ceiling being as low as it is, it's under the auditorium. For those who haven't been, it's, it's, we're situated in the band room is under the auditorium, in a general, under the seating area. So there's only a certain amount of headroom physically possible. Uh, generally a band room, because of the amount of sound, needs a larger volume of air to, to allow the sound to dissipate. There's a lot of direct reflection of sound that will go to the ceiling that's only 12 feet high and come back down uh, so it's, it's just a lot of sound. It's difficult to hear. I say what a lot, but uh, outside of that, um, we have big equipment pieces that need to move up and down those little, we only have about six steps, but I have a 250 pound marimba that moves up and down. Luckily, high school kids are strong. I guess they also have to go to the weight room besides the <laughs> athletes. Uh, through you, Mr. Chairman, I got a couple more questions. Yes, Thank yes, you, yes. appreciate it. Uh, Thank you, Mr. Fry, on that. Uh, I, would, I just wanted to, in case anyone didn't know, know about that. Um, the THS drama is a little different this year, I think, because we have a staff member that has a, uh, that's on leave. But uh, it would be nice in the future if we could, um, I think if we could just stay consistent and try to find some kind of a way to uh, be consistent with the way we run our uh, spring and fall shows, whatever that may be. And uh, no, to, to no fault of any particular one individual, but if we could stay consistent with that, I think it would be helpful for the students. I don't want the students uh, year to year, you only have four, in some cases five years if you're in eighth grade, you only have that short amount of time in that program, so I, I really want them to get the full benefit of any possible shows or, or um, thing on the, on the drama that they can possibly get. I agree. I, we want. We find it very important that they have all five years of opportunity to be in those programs, because there's the the drama director for the last few years because she's on leave uh, for the for for a few months. The last few years, probably five years now, we've put our big show in the fall because we look at it like it's it's a 
it's a more warm, a warmer welcome to Taunton High drama when your first experience is, I'll, I, I want to audition, now I can get accepted. So we put our largest show, which is generally the musicals, we put them into the fall. Um, this year, as you mentioned, Mr. Souza, we had to uh, debate whether to have someone else direct the fall show or to switch that with the spring show. And we decided that the least, the least disruptive option would, would be to, uh, to have the large show in the spring. And we, we've gone to, as far as we can, to explain that to the students so that they, they understand there's that big show in the spring that they can audition for. And um, I think that they'll have a positive experience with that uh, with that teacher in the spring, so we we think that this is the way to go. But absolutely, I agree. We're we're planning next year, in all likelihood, to switch back the other way, so that and to be consistent from then going forward with the large show in the fall. Thank you, Mr. Fry. I appreciate that and appreciate the effort on understanding how that that whole thing was. For, it, it's for, it's for the kids. And um, uh, uh, one uh, two more items. Uh, one of them is the sound in the THS auditorium. Uh, that up to date. I know we had issues there a few years back. Are we currently at uh, what we need there for? Uh, well, Mr. Souza, I don't want to put you on the spot. I don't want to put administration on the spot. I just want to know where we, we're at. We are. Yes, we we did we did add some equipment a few years ago. Uh, there was a lot of problem with on stage sound. So the sound in the house, I think, is okay, and on stage it was lacking. So especially say committee w members would sit on stage during a, a award ceremony and have difficulty hearing what was going on and now outside of user error uh, that is that is we do have the equipment that we that we need and so now we're we're trying to make sure that everybody's trained to use it properly if you were asking me is the sound system underpowered overall for the auditorium a sound professional would say yes, but they're never satisfied. So I, I think I'm, I'm pretty satisfied as far as a high school program, uh, a high school facility. I think that it's fine. I appreciate the answer. Um, I know maybe just my hearing is uh, getting a little uh, suspect as the couple of years are going on in my life. Um, that could be because I usually have to sit in a certain location to get the right hearing, uh, the right sound when I'm at the, uh, the drama show. Uh, appreciate that answer. And, um, Last but certainly not least, um, I think that um, there's all kinds of benefits from the music and drama in all facets of um, communication, no matter what degree a, a students go in. And I know that in my own family, and uh, one of your accomplishments is one of our graduates uh, several years back, who right now is um, on Broadway in an ensemble, and. Um, in the he most popular a, show. Pardon me. In the most popular show on Broadway. In the Broadway. most popular show on Broadway, and he may be, on the and, and he may be, um, he may be, on the Tony Awards with their new song, with the song for the show. So uh, we've come a long way, and uh, I thank this committee because this committee is 100% behind the performing arts, and I've been proud to sit here as, as a member in that uh, being 100% behind performing arts. Thank you, thank you for your patience, Mr. Chairman, and uh, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Suda. Any further comments? Mr. Fiore, please. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. First of all, I have to say personally, I'm happy to see the athletic and music departments presenting together because I was in marching band in both high school and college, and I can tell you that in both institutions, the athletic department was very good to me. Uh, in Taunton High, I received a varsity letter for my work in, in the band, and in college, the band was actually uh, a stepchild of the music department. The only academic credit I received was a phys ed credit for my work in the marching band. So uh, nice, to, nice to see the unity there. I also have to say I'm very pleased and proud with the uh, progress that the performing arts program has made. Uh, from the olden days, uh, the program produced my sister, who was a music major, and my daughter, who's a theater major, and uh, my sister was an, was an all-state uh, in high school. My daughter was a, a junior district. So uh, I know the work that's always gone into it and, and glad to see that it's been, it's been multiplied. And uh, 
And we're proud of, of what both the athletic department and the music department have been doing. I'm very Thank pleased. Thank you. You know, it's, it's unusual for a music director and athletic director to get along quite as well as we do. Um, and we appreciate the support of the committee and the administration. And really, I think the most important thing in our relationship between me and Mr. Ivanelli is that the, the whole focus is on the students. And we, want, we tell them directly, we want you to do music and sports. They tell us, no, we can't. And we say, no, we're in charge of those programs. You can and you should. Mr. Ottavinelli conducted on a band concert last year. We, we, we've gone to great lengths to make sure people understand that. We appreciate that support. Mr. DeMello, then Mr. Martin, please. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. Fry, this uh, presentation was music to my ears. <laughs> no, all kidding aside. So <laughs> We have to make this, you know, a little lighthearted. But no, it's all kidding aside. So my claim to fame in high school was performing in Of Mice and Men and Enemy of the People, which is really out there. But uh, I'm sure you'll be happy to, if you stick around also like Mr. Otto Vianelli, uh, I'm sure you'll be happy to uh, hear my report out uh, from our meeting that took place on October 21st. So uh, thank you for your work and thank you for being here. Thank you, Mr. DeMello. Mr. Martin, please. I'd like to make a motion that we go out of order, regular order of business and move to uh, two of the three subcommittee reports, one being the Finance and Law Subcommittee and the second one being the Long Range Planning Subcommittee, because both those reports contain items per pertinent to these two gentlemen. Second. Okay, motion's been made and second to go out of the regular order of business to subcommittee reports. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed, so voted. Finance and Law Subcommittee, Mr. Mar Chairman so quickly, Martin, please. The Finance and Law Subcommittee met earlier this evening with myself, Mr. Souza, Mr. Fiore, Superintendent Cabral, and Assistant Superintendent Monaghan. We had student activity requests for Parker Middle School in the amount of $910.40. We also had a use of facilities report that was received and placed on file. And we had an update on our quarterly report for budget, FY20 budget, revolving accounts and grants. In addition, we had bills payable in the amount of $720,064.99. And the last item on the agenda was a facilities update, which Ms. Moynihan gave to us. And <clears throat> my notes here show that we talked about, I have someone else's notes. <clears throat> we talked about, uh, fill me in. What's that? Um, the TMLP. The TMLP. Okay, that was that, and okay. Before we do the TMLP, Mr. May, Mr. Uh, Susan made a motion to get an update on all our uh, lighting at our facilities. Now that we have uh, getting dark at 4:30 in the afternoon, we have some lights out here and there that we uh, need to take care of. So that was a motion that Mr. Uh, Susan made. It was seconded by Mr. Fiore, and it passed unanimously. But uh, either. Mr. Cabral or Ms. Monahan, if you would share with us the TMLP report that it's pertinent to the athletic uh, department. I'd be happy to. So on November 5th, 2019, I received a letter from Craig Foley, uh, who is the di distribution manager for the Taunton Municipal Lighting Plant. In the letter, uh, Mr. Foley commented that on October 30th, 2019, the TMLP Lighting Plant Commission voted to donate the following to the Taunton High School baseball field. They will be donating uh, lighting, metal poles, and as well as the labor to install lighting at the Taunton baseball field. The school department will be responsible for doing the prep work to secure the lighting and the footings, but we are very excited to, to announce publicly that we will be collaborating with TMLP to bring lights to the new baseball stadium. And that's the... Uh that's the report of the Finance and Law Subcommittee. Motion we accept the report and adopt the recommendations of the subcommittee. Second. All right, motion's been made and second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Can I just Oppose? add one oh, thing sure. after the fact? Just so uh, just the committee recalls, when we put the baseball bid out, the lighting alone was about half a million dollars. So that is a great contribution or a great donation by the TMLP to the school department. They're Thank not half a million dollars. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> Portion of it. Well, if we use cost avoidance in addition, that's a huge <laughs> cost avoidance, one of our favorite buzzwords. All right, thank you very much. Motion's made. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed, so voted. Next item is Chairman DeMello of the Long Range Planning and School Properties Subcommittee, please. 
Thank you, Mr. Chairman. So on October 21st, the uh, Long Range Planning and School Property Subcommittee came together. In attendance was myself as chair, Ms. Doherty, and Mr. Martin as members. Also in attendance was Mr. Fiore, Mr. Souza, and also we had Mr. Fry and Major Anderson also in attendance. So uh, the agenda items uh, that we uh, specifically uh, spoke about was a existing layout that uh, Superintendent Cabral uh, brought before us, and, and assist, I'm sorry, also in attendance with Superintendent Cabral and Assistant Superintendent Monahan. Uh, before us came an existing layout of the Taunton High School uh, and the possible expansion points. Uh, but it was a well-documented uh, design. It was an aero view. It was well thought out, and it, it gave us a lot to to uh, to think about and, and bring forth with our recommendations to the committee. Um, basically, those uh, existing conditions uh, expose the limits of the band and the ROTC of what they have uh, for use. The aerial view and the entire geographical location was very visible and uh, very easy to work with. Uh, the main focus was what could be done uh, to expand uh, the footprint for the use of band in ROTC. Uh, much discussion took place. Some issues that were brought forward. Uh, Mr. Fry, as he's uh, probably already mentioned this evening, uh, was uh, basically about rehearsal and uh, the tight quarters, about the stairs, about the instruments going up and down stairs of 200 plus pounds. Um, uh, basically, uh, the ceiling heights, uh, the, the, the speakers. So it, it's important to realize that uh, if these kids are performing, they need to be able to perform and, and listen to the quality of music in a proper setting. So it's key that these, uh, these additions or whatever we decide to do uh, basically adhere to uh, the ability for these kids to uh, perform at their, at their fullest capacity. Uh, Major Anderson, on the other hand, stated that, yes, this is fine, but we probably need some wood flooring uh, because of marching drills and so forth. So we had many discussions of what to look into. Would it be a brick and mortar? Would it be a bubble dome? Um, what else did we mention? Uh, this Portable. Sort of I'm sorry? Portable classroom. Portable classrooms was also mentioned. So there was a multitude of discussion that took place, uh, and I think that we basically uh, recommended, uh, not basically, but we did a recap as follows. And Mr. Uh, Martin, you can fill in for anything that I may have overlooked, uh, to uh, approach this through the Master's School Building Authority, through the MSBA. Uh, to speak to the M MSBA to put together a statement of interest, which is uh, the acronym is S SOI, uh, that explains deficiencies. Look at pricing points of brick and mortar versus a steel frame bubble with classroom, space and climate control, uh, multiple floors, uh, modular classrooms, as Mr. as Mr. Martin just mentioned. So all of this is what is now in the next phase that I believe Superintendent will probably discuss later on in his, one of his reports. Uh, we all voted in favor to move the recommendation forward and uh, we're going on to the next step. So uh, I, think it's something, uh, I think it's something that uh, needs immediate attention. Uh, unfortunately, the immediate is not a six to nine month or even 12 month resolution, but we have to start somewhere. And before I continue on to the next subject, Mr. Martin, did you want to add? I would like to, it's not part of your report, but I'd like to add as part of this process that we look into adding additional space for the athletic department. And I don't mean fields, I'm talking about interior space, uh, because as Mr. Ardavanelli pointed out, he's had about a 30% increase in the number of participants since 2012 in athletics. And as he said, I'll take words out of his mouth, but he said something about between 2.30 and 3.15, that place is jam-packed, if I'm not mistaken. And again, it would just be additional space. So and that's what between Mr. Fry is looking for, additional space, and that's what ROTC is looking for, additional space. So, you know, right. I'd just like to add that, if I could, to your, uh, to your finance and law sure. report. Sure, absolutely. Uh, and to I, your long-range planning report. Yeah. <laughs> I got finance and, and, and law And I think we, we touched upon that, too, that we, we don't want to exclude anybody. And I think that's in one of my uh, meeting minutes that uh, we want to be inclusive of every uh, piece of, of, of student population that needs to be served. So thank you for mentioning that, Mr. Martin. Mr. Mr. Is it proper to bring up Mr. Ardivianelli if he wants to say something? Sure. Did you? I was just saying that he was correct. Just to validate that? Oh, yes. You got it, Mr. Ardivianelli. <laughs> definitely validated. So definitely uh, we'll add that. 
And uh, as we concluded uh, the meeting, uh, which went for one hour strong, uh, Mr. Cabral uh, did bring forth a exploratory um, 30,000 foot view of the nursing home and what could the school department uh, basically put it to use or do something with it in future plans. So very preliminary, but what was the, the finding on that was uh, Mr. Cabral was going to uh, and put in writing to the public property uh, subcommittee of the city council uh, so that we could discuss this further. So we don't have a building that's sitting there idle, uh, possibly uh, uh, for vandalism purposes and so forth and so on. So there are some, some discussion points that we talked about, um, which uh, probably will be brought up very, very soon. But Mr. Martin, as- If I could just add too, I think by adding athletics to that space uh, situation, I think that would go a long way toward helping us possibly get some state reimbursement. Yes, in other words, show the need. We have a need in athletics. We have a need in ROTC. Yes. We have a need in, in the performing arts. Sure. So the more need we have, the I think the better it flies Absolutely. as far as the state level. And we definitely have a lot of need, and I'm sure that uh, we could uh, put that all together in a nice package and get some uh, state dollars down to the city of Taunton and for our students and our taxpayers. Uh, so uh, in conclusion, uh, we just basically said uh, push this forward to the entire committee uh, and we all had uh, affirmative yeas and here we are before you. So that was my report. Motion we accept the report. Second. I adopt the recommendations of the subcommittee. Motion and second. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed so good. Thank you, Chairman DiMarco. Next is high school subcommittee. Uh, do you want to go back to the regular order of business or do you want to finish the subcommittee? Yeah, why don't you finish? Yes, high school subcommittee. High school subcommittee met on 10-22-19. We first met over at the Taunton Alternative High School. We had a meeting scheduled for four to six. It didn't last that long, but uh, one thing I can say about that is the students that are there are really happy to be there. It's become a place for them that you know they. Most of them talk about the size of the high school, how big it is and all that, and they function much better in a smaller environment. Uh, I'd like to say that Mr. Souza was there and Mrs. Almeida were also in attendance at the meeting. Mrs. Almeida is the chair of the high school subcommittee. But those kids are really, one of the girls said to me, I, I said to her, Do you, would you wanna go back to the high school? And she said, no, I get too distracted I'm better off here. So it's nice to see students come in, and one student came in from another school district, but they came in and they really feel comfortable there, and there's a little bit more individualized instruction. So that was that, that makes us feel good because we had wanted an alternative high school for a long time. After that, we came over to Taunton High School and had a discussion with, we had representatives from each of the four grades that are there, the five grades that are there, so we had two eighth graders, two freshmen, two sophomores, so on. And it was interesting conversation. They all talked about different things, but one of the things that stuck out with me was the homework issue because the students, and your son was also there, Mr. Polsky. Uh, one of the issues that they had, this, the kids that were eighth grade students and ninth grade students, they said they didn't get enough homework in middle school and that they got to the high school and they were struggling trying to keep up with it, how difficult it was. So I, I think we have to stop you know, revisiting that. We talked about that after yeah, Mr. Souza. Yeah, we just look at what's going on because it, it was quite a lengthy conversation about that. I don't, if there's something else you'd like to add to what we talked about there, but they, the kids were wonderful and I think in that kind of setting, and we, by the way, we also got fed because we were over at the Taunton Tiger Den, which has been a wonderful addition, Mr. Cabral. Uh, it was it was just nice to be there with them, but they were very relaxed with us talking to us. But it's interesting how some of the stuff you don't realize what's going on with the kids. But I think generally they they're pretty happy with what's going on, except for the not getting used to all that homework. <laughs> no, yes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yes, um, I agree with my uh, colleague. Uh, it's always a ple uh, pleasure to go over there, and uh, it they starts out slow, and then the speed picks up, and then everyone joins in. And once one student starts talking, then they all feel comfortable and uh, they all talk right from the heart. There's no hold, holding back and uh, it's always good to hear what they have well, to say. You know what else it, is, is interesting too, and with Mr. Rodavianelli here and Mr. Fry, 
you know, these ancillary programs that we have, even like the ROTC and, and Decker and stuff like that, they're, they're a little bit different programs, but the appeal that they have to the students and the kids that have found a home in those programs that really thrive, and I hope the public realizes that as a committee, we've always strived to get in all those things because uh, the whole, you know we just don't educate the academic part. It's the whole student. I loved it when we got questions about what academic programs. The whole student's not just about academics. Right. Boy, if you can get them into something that they enjoy, and you know the shop programs, the family and consumer science, all those things, all help to to, to help these kids make decisions. And I actually was talking to a gentleman today that. Well, actually, he, I, he he does all this stuff for screening of all kinds of things, and he was saying that he never thought he would get into something like that, taught himself how to do all those things, and he said it's just been unbelievable to be able to do that. And he, he actually said to me, I think not all kids should go to college. Maybe some of them ought to get into the trades and learn how to do stuff like that. So I think we can foster that without making anybody feel bad, but these kids truly have found homes in some of these programs that we have. So I'm gonna to continue to support them because I really think we have to educate the whole student, not just the academic It certainly part. gives us a good reason to call our school our comprehensive high school. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and uh, we, we're doing yep. a lot of good over there with all of these programs. Yeah, I, it, I, it, I think it, so. Should you see the, you know, when, when you feel like you belong to something, no matter what the program is, and then there's also kids there that play sports that love doing that also. I mean, all those things make for us, for just such wonderfully involved kids, and I, and it's, it keeps them focused on stuff, and it, it, in many ways it keeps them out of trouble and keeps them safe. They're in a safe environment when they're at the at the school, you know. And and I find so many of those kids are just happy to be there because of all those different offerings. So I hope that's always a focus of this C committee to keep the continuous improvement, Mrs. Fagan. Continuous improvement. Yep. So that's my report. Motion we accept the report. Second. Second. Motion been seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed, so Motion voted. Motion to go back to the regular order of business. Second. Second. Motion been made and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed, so voted. And I did hear the Tiger Den has fish and chips for like four ninety nine on Friday. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you. Yeah, it's like less than $5. It's, wow. it's not that that One funny. cent less, but that's yeah, okay. Yeah, no, I did my math. I was paying attention <laughs> while you all were talking. <laughs> But, you, but you'll no longer get that school committee discount. Next item on the agenda: no. Superintendent's yeah. report. Superintendent John Cabo. Uh, before I before I go into my report, I just want to echo something uh, regarding the uh, advisory meetings. What I enjoyed most about the advisory meeting was the ability to report back to them all the items that we implemented because of their feedback. So I, I think we implemented uh, like seven or eight. Uh, items because of item information they shared with us so it was nice not to leave with any homework but I anticipate the next time we meet with them there'll be a long list of items that we can help them address throughout the course of the school year so with that said I'll uh, go into my superintendent's report I, it may seem a little lengthy because I feel like we haven't met in quite some time but I'm gonna also echo what the advisory just discussed opportunity and access so I will continue to uh, turn every stone to provide opportunity and access for our students. So on October 23rd, 2019, myself, Dala Hocktung, who's a CBTE co-director, and high school head guidance counsel Paul Bachman, we made the journey to Lawrence High School to listen to Governor Charlie Baker and officials from the ASA, which is the American Student Assistance Group, discuss the availability of $1.8 million worth of grants to help high schools, comprehensive and vocational, develop innovation, innovative pathway programs in their schools. So on that day, a total of $354,000 worth of planning grants were awarded to those in attendance. The Innovation Pathway Program is designed to engage students in discovering future careers. In addition, the program aims to help high school students succeed through college level courses and internships. Now the ASA, you may be familiar with the ASA, they were very instrumental in helping the Taunton Public Schools implement Project Lead the Way in two of our middle schools. Uh, last year you may recall and you may see it on the grants report that Mrs. Moynihan presented earlier, they awarded the Taunton Public Schools with a $100,000 grant to launch Project Lead the Way over a three year period, a time period. 
So on October 23rd, Tom Public Schools, the high school, received a $10,000 planning grant to develop three innovative pathway programs in the fields of healthcare, social assistance, and information assistance. So we're very excited for this opportunity. I cannot thank the high school enough for continuing to look for innovative ways to provide our students who or uh, maybe when they're ready to leave high school, wish to pursue opportunities in the workforce. So very proud of that. Uh, next item on the report uh, that we're very excited about, and I believe this is a first in Taunton's history. So if I'm wrong, I apologize, but I believe this is a first. Uh, WGBH High School Quiz Show has announced that Taunton High School will be one of 17 high schools from across the Commonwealth to compete in the public television tournament, academic tournament. Questions on the show are aligned with the Massachusetts High School curriculum standards that include literature, history, civics, science, and math, as well as current events and general knowledge. There are 17 schools competing in the competition, and three are competing for the first time. A defending champion is Boston Latin, and there are 16 schools, including Taunton, that will be looking to dethrone Boston Latin from its championship. So Taunton High School, along with Salem, Acad Salem Academy Charter School and Waltham High School, uh, three schools making their inaugural appearance. The Taunton High School team is comprised of Samuel Leeson, Victoria Gravel, who are both seniors at the high school, and juniors Aiden Scully and Manor Abbas. Their qualifying score was 820. I believe the top score was 960, and they came in with a very respectful 820. So the high school quiz show matches will be taped on WGBH Studios on the following dates, which I've listed below for you to follow. So we're very excited about this opportunity for our kids, and it's nice to see our students competing with the other schools of the Commonwealth. It just goes to demonstrate that not only are we strong academically, performing arts, but also strong academically as well. On professional day, November 5th, 2019, we had over 600 professional educators within the Taunton Public Schools participate in district-wide professional development. Additionally, professional development opportunities were provided to support staff, in inclusive of our administrators, nurses, educational assistants, secretarial staff, and substitute cafeteria workers. In your packet, you will find all the offerings that we offered on that day. We also had our, term time, our fall term time courses recently concluded. We had over 148 educators participate in seven mini courses that encompassed 10 hours of instruction. The courses included implicit bias, curriculum to curriculum planning, English literacy 6 to 12, introduction to writer's workshop, uh, K to 5 foundations and fractions, comprehensive toolkit, reading and note taking connections, teaching English language learners through written content for the general educator, and when teachers examine writing. The next professional day will take place on Tuesday, March 3rd, 2020. In Taunton Public Schools, October 21 through October 25th, we celebrated STEM Week throughout Massachusetts as well as here in Taunton. Uh, and we also, during the Mass STEM Week, we ended a four-week term time series for third and fourth grade teachers. The teachers were engaged in engineering as elementary, and they utilized kits where the science content, where they brought the science content alive for their students. Students designed and built and revised alarm circuits and floating magnetic trains to demonstrate the deep connectivity between science and engineering practices. In classrooms across the city, students com competed in STEM challenges, and in some classes, teachers found ways to integrate science into math and ELA. Classrooms, in some cases, classrooms were converted into hospitals, in one case, Jurassic Park, where students carefully crafted, carefully crafted state, with teachers carefully crafted station activities. Students engaged in science, math, ELA, and other rigorous activities. Uh, we had intern students from the high school visit MIT, and we, which provided students with opportunities to imagine themselves in STEM-related careers. Uh, Project Lead the Way, again, you're going to continue hearing Project Lead the Way as we continue to expand offerings for us teachers and students. But we had Project Lead the Way. We had a dozen teachers from grades K through 12 attend a professional development in Boston where they learned about the exciting STEM week curriculum centered around sustainability. Students authentically examined the impact of disposable plastics in containers, clothing, and cleaning products. We also had students design toys for students with cerebral palsy. Last but not least, we had 10 teachers from three middle schools and two elementary schools participate in an inter externship at Dupre Synthesis, a Johnson & Johnson company. 
and I have some talking points I want to go over real quick, so please bear with me. I want to congratulate DECA for the MDA walk, which I believe they raised $6,000, which is almost double what they raised the previous year. I also need to give a shout out to the Air Force ROTC program at the high school. They went through their annual review and they received a score of exemplary, so very proud of, of, their, of their grade. You may have seen it on our Twitter feed, but very, very proud of the turnout. Uh, the participation was more than we expected for the students who submitted postcards to our veterans who are currently serving and have served. So it's not too late if you haven't submitted a, a, a count or a guesstimate on how many postcards were tweeted out. So you can get that count in. My helpers in the EL program here at EPOL are counting the cards. Hope to have an answer soon. So the person who guesses the right total will get a $25 gift card courtesy of Mr. Cabral. School committee members are not allowed to guess. And last but not least, I want to comment, uh, commend the high school. Had an outstanding site visit today. I was there from 7 8 o'clock this morning until 2 o'clock. Was able to observe the math department, the CBTE department, science department, ELA, as well as inclusion classrooms. I enjoyed what I saw as far as rigor and as far as students uh, being student engagement. Uh, very excited to see, and it makes me feel good knowing moving forward that uh, our students are receiving a quality education at the high school. And with that, that concludes my report. Thank you, Superintendent Cabral. Any members have any questions for the Most superintendent? Motion we accept the report. Is there a second? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed, so Just voted. Just one question for the superintendent, Mr. Yes, Chairman. Yes, Mr. Did, Souza, did please. Did he have lunch with the students? Did he approve the, the cafeteria food while uh, he was there? No, I was not shadowing a student. Uh, oh, that that will take place, I believe, I have the date scheduled sometime in May. So. I, I will have like, lunch in May. I just like your feedback on the cafeteria. No, today I did, uh, I did not uh, have lunch today. I was trying to get caught up on emails today during my lunch block. Thank you, Mr. Chim. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Sousa. <laughs> All right, uh, we've already, administrative business, staffing report. See if you can place that file. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed, so voted. New business. Uh, Mr. Sousa, please. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, this is to Mr. Cabral. Uh, maybe Ms. Moynihan, because this may fall under her department, is the school calendar. Um, <laughs> <laughs> the school calendar. It, this, this, is, this is the point. Uh, we had a preliminary election in the city. Sometimes we have it, sometimes we don't. I was in Bennett School voting, and I just, it's right around the time of dismissal. And boy, we're, we're putting our staff members, no fault of anyone's, through, through some rigor, um, you know, two staff members are there watching the public as they're coming in, make sure they don't interfere with the kids. It's, it's a real safety issue with the building being open during any election. And I know we've got it covered for the, for the city election, we've got it covered for the presidential, you know, the, the, gov the state elections, the presidential elections. Uh, we got it covered for the primary, the presidential primary, which is coming up in March. But when these pr preliminary elections come up, which is, we don't know if it's gonna happen because it all depends on the voting on the year of the municipal election. Um, it could happen or it may not. We should think about closing school that day because I think it's a big safety issue with the school being open while this election is going on. I just, our staff members do an exemplary job, but I just think it's a big issue with those buildings being open, um, being used for voting is what I'm saying. That just, just a thought, something to look for in the calendar in the future. Um, Again, we won't know till we don't know until uh, the fall of that year anyway, so we can't plan ahead. But maybe we could put a floater in there that would take the place of that, because we do know when the date is going to be. But in the previous um, April, when we when the papers come out, uh, the the political calendar is set by the uh, registrar voters office, so we do know in the spring what that fall date is. So if we could put a floater in there, I just think it's a safety issue that do, if we just close school on that day. That's just the one member's thought. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Souza. Ms. Fagan, please. Um, one other question, the day that we had the, the late start, I had talked to you about the issue with late, with tardies, is that all taken care of? Uh, I need to check with Mrs. Perry because she and I were discussing that and we were going to ask or remind our principals during late starts to use judgment uh, as students and parents. And I know this impacted my family uh, trying to transport our daughters to school. They, yes, they were late. So we, on late starts, we would anticipate that students would not be mock tardy because it does 
Well, I think, as I, just so the committee knows, I had called Mr. Cabral because it impacted my family too. My granddaughter called me in a panic. A tree came down on her street and they blocked both ends so the buses couldn't get down. And there were kids in that neighborhood. The problem, the problem is with Taunton High and Friedman, they both start at the same time. So you gotta make a choice. You're going to this one or that one. Somebody's gonna be late. So she felt bad because her friend got marked toddy because they brought the brother or something to the high school. So I, I just thought that on days like that, maybe we shouldn't be so tough on the toddy because you, you just couldn't get around. There was a lot of damage in the city. Yeah, and I'll, I'll go back to my days as a principal. We always used uh, common yeah. sense and our judgment yeah. uh, as far as when a student would come in late because obviously we know it impacts families in the morning. Yeah, it does when, when you have two kids going to two different. You you want to say something, Mr. Mark? Along the same lines, uh, maybe look into the, uh, the train on Fremont Street. Lately, that train has been blocking that intersection oh, yeah. for minutes, multiple minutes. And I understand one of the buses was like 10 to 15 minutes late because it was waiting for the train. And all of a sudden, it seems that that train is very, that, that uh, crossing is very, uh, very busy. You're shaking your head. You're yeah, I heard it was 20 to 30 minutes one day. I think that's the trash train. That's going to only get a lot busier. <laughs> I believe that there's a train that goes through Taunton now is full of trash, or will be. I don't know if that might be a, a misnomer, but the Taunton rails are going to get a lot more busy as, as things change in the state with solid waste. So we're in the middle of the state. We're in the middle of New England, who makes it great and makes us a great place for trains, which is a really bad place for school buses. We were concerned at, at my day job because of ambulances and stuff, because, yeah, because that Fremont one is a pretty main drag. And it if is. you're heading from Oakland, Westville, or Norton, and you're trying to get to downtown where, like, the hospital is, well, what, are you, what are you going to do? <laughs> I was going to Four Kicks for a 6 o'clock soccer game, and I was probably the 15th or 20th car in line at 20 minutes to 6. Mm. And I got to the game at 5 past. Wow. Oh. <laughs> it certainly does encourage you to get more well acquainted with the cities trying to figure out shortcuts and everything yes. all over the place. That's yes. one thing. But sometimes you just can't. It blocks everything off. Yeah, and Fremont Street's going to get busier with that, the, the number of houses that are going up toward the end of it. Wow. Drones. Three figures worth of the houses <laughs> when you add them all up. To deliver the kids. Not quite drones. sure how they're going to get out. <laughs> so anyway, but that's, that's another issue to <clears throat> cause kids to be late for school. And it's mm -hmm. not just the buses. It's the parents taking the kids to school. <clears throat> Well, that's what happened it, it, with the late start. Sometimes they, they, they're going in two different directions, you know, because those two schools start at the same time. Right. So anyway, but I got the panic phone call. Where are you? I don't want to be late. And I had to call your mother, who's the secretary over there, and say, I'm coming with her. But the street, they blocked it off at both ends. Yeah. So and the bus doesn't know the bus can't go down. So thank you, Mr. Cabral. OK, no further uh, uh, new business. Unfinished business action item updates. There are two action items that are listed that Mr. Superintendent Cabral wants us to bring up, but I'll, Mr. DeMello first, please. Uh, I'll defer to the Superintendent DeMello. Okay. The first item, there's an update in our packet. Uh, we dated it the 2nd of October. Update on the DESE Special Ed Final Report. We have an update and there's a couple dates that are coming up. One is November 26th, is the Special Education Facilities and Classrooms. Uh, and then there's an evidence, uh, and there's the April 12th, 2020. So there's an evidence due. So if you look at that, what's in the Mo packet, yep. we're going to get updates yep. on those. Motion to, uh, motion to dispense it from the action items. It okay. Is there a second to that, please? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed, so voted. The other item is the one we have dated from May 15th to ask the safety officer. There's a Letty signage report from Beta Engineering in our packet. There's a two-pager. One is the proposed recommended layout, and then the second is the detailed page of what the signs are. Motion to dispense from those action items. Is there a second? Second. Oh, Mr. DeMello. So, uh, I'm sorry. So, nope. we're talking about the safety officer? Yes. The Letty signage to the city council, There is. A, it appears that there is actually a layout that's going to be recommended to them. That's in the packet. Uh, I... I I, I'm always one of those that likes to keep something on the agenda until we get a final result from okay. our colleagues on City Council. So if uh, my other colleagues here at School Committee would like to continue leaving it there, okay. I think it's uh, well worth the cause. I'll withdraw the motion out of courtesy. Um, I'll withdraw the motion, but 
I think it's they've got it in the design stage, so that means that means that they're it, it's, it's on its way. So, but if you want to leave, yeah, it that's on. pretty much the email. Thank you for saying that, Mr. Souza, because that's the email that because I asked uh, Office Safety Officer Williams, "Is this it? Are we done?" And his re response to me was, "As far as he's concerned, he's done, and he was going to press or push to have it done." But I understand what Mr. Mello is saying. It's it'll by having it on the action item, it'll bring it back where I can confirm that it has been completed. That's all I'm looking I'll for. I'll withdraw the motion. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, Mr. motion Sorry. withdrawn, and that makes perfect sense because at that point there'll be a public record back from our brothers and sisters on the city council where we can then discuss what they were able to do. That means you have to get it then before we leave. Before you leave, so let's get moving. <laughs> <laughs> well, we have to have a new interim mayor first. That hasn't been resolved either. Yeah, there's a been date. We have no mayor. Well, I watched that. There's a special <laughs> meeting maybe scheduled. So I hear that to too. Tune in. Uh, any fired. further? Thank you. Any further discussion on these? Uh, Mr. DeMello, please. Uh, I guess it comes under this uh, particular piece of business. Just a, a quick update on the Mulcahy School under budget on time. Is everything going well? Uh, we have our yeah, last meeting. I forget where it was. We stated it was 20, was it? It, almost 30% completed, and we have our next meeting uh, this coming Tuesday on the 19th, I believe, is our next meeting. So I'll have an update the first meeting in December. So everything's status quo, no problem. Yeah, so everything's far. running well. Mrs. Moynihan had a technology meeting today. They had a furniture meeting last Friday. So we continue to meet uh, with the architects, the engineers, our OPM. Everything's running along. Great. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. DeMello. Mr. Martin, please. Uh, the item uh, of September 4th referring the, uh, to Finance and Law Subcommittee, the FY2021 budget item oh. to review cost, is that something you're considering under the 2021? In other words, does it have to go through finance and law, or can it just go to a, you're preparing the budget as we speak? Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, Mr. Martin, the question was? Oh, it's related. Take it off the uh, action item. Yeah, it'll be. You are in the process of it, the 2021 budget. Correct. It'll be included in our budget. Well, why don't we include it? Why don't we, uh, Mr. Chairman? Yes, Mr. I brought that up. I just want to see that once we, once we, once we start with the preliminary budget at the beginning of the year, if it's on there, then we'll just strike it then. And if, I get if we get information prior to the FY21 budget hearings or budget meetings that we have scheduled with school committee, then you will receive that in the form of a memo during finance and law. Okay. Thank you. Not a problem. Thank you, Mr. Martin. Thank you, Mr. Sousa. Any further uh, unfinished business items or action item review questions? Hearing none, critical items not reasonably anticipated 48 hours in advance. Nothing on the fish and chips to take it down. <laughs> Press time. Uh, I did see Charlie Winnocore the other day, but he was looking at there was a. Was he eating fish and chips? There was an accident behind DPW. We saw him run across oh, the train yeah. tracks. Uh, is there a motion return? So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed, move, move. Oh, no. uh, before we adjourn, we're because now. we're not going to see everyone or not see each other until well, December, I want right. to wish everyone a happy Thanksgiving. And a blessed Thanksgiving to you and your families. Thank you. What time are you, House Superintendent? Thank you. Happy Thanksgiving. If you can get through the door. <laughs> <laughs>